developed by a Japanese uh, scientist in 1978. Uh, but it was actually the Russians that took over the technology and based the development of it in Poland. So today, most of the professional cryotherapy devices are manufactured in Poland. And they've been using cryotherapy machines in their NHS equivalent hospitals for the past four decades. It was actually Wales Rugby that were the first of the, 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 the Western uh, sports people to trial cryotherapy. They went out to Poland as part of their pre-World Cup training, um, oh, probably about 15 years ago, and used cryotherapy when they were over there. But it was Saracens and Leicester City Football Club that were the first of the teams to bring a chamber uh, over to the, the UK. And indeed, Leicester City brought a chamber over the last, I think, two months of the season before they won the Premier League. They were lying bottom of the Premier League, nine points from safety, and they won seven of the last nine games, and then went on to win the Premier League the next year. And whether it was cryotherapy that, that did it or not, but lots of the Premier League clubs then copied Leicester City and bought their own, their own chambers. Now, there are different types of cryotherapy uh, chambers or devices. The, the, the three types are, you have electrically cooled chambers. Uh, they're, they're very safe. You, you normally see them in spas, but the problem is they cannot get down to the temperatures that are required for therapeutic purposes. The optimum temperature is about minus 130 degrees. And to put it into perspective, if you operate at minus 100, you lose about 10 times the benefit. Electric machines tend to operate around minus 70. They get around it by having fans that push the air. So you get a wind chill factor that makes it feel colder, but medically, therapeutically, you're not getting the benefit. So they're, they're used in the spa environment. The other type are nitrogen chilled and you have direct and indirect. Direct is where you've probably seen on television celebrities standing in a pod with a head sticking out. They're all capable of getting to the temperatures, but the problem is with direct nitrogen chilling where you're standing in nitrogen, you can't put your head in it, otherwise you'd suffocate and die, hence why the head has to be out. Again, from a medical perspective, it's a bit like cold water swimming. You see lots of people walking into the sea with woolly hats and gloves on. If the brain's nice and warm, it's not going to react the same way to the cold. So they always say, immerse your head in the water to get the benefits. It's the same with cryotherapy. The, the brain has to be involved. And for that reason, we wouldn't use the direct, direct nitrogen chilling devices. One of the other main reasons is just from a health and safety perspective. The main nitrogen suppliers in the UK won't supply people that operate these devices because they, they think they're unsafe. And then you're left with the indirect nitrogen chilling, where nitrogen is used to chill the cold air that's then pushed into the chamber. So you can get down to the temperatures you want, but you have the safety. You can walk in, breathe normally, um, and, 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 and get all the benefits. So those are the, the three types, and, and we only operate across our business the professional uh, indirect nitrogen chilled uh, chambers. The, the, the technology was originally developed for medical purposes to treat people with MS and rheumatoid and osteoarthritis. It's gone on to treat, very successfully treat any inflammatory based medical condition. So we see people. <laughs> we see people with um, those those conditions, but a lot of others. Um, eczema is, is is a big one. Uh, steroid withdrawal syndrome, uh, you know, psoriasis, anything that's inflammatory based. Um, and then of course you have the sports side of things, where 
as of now, most of the Premier League teams have their own chambers, a few in the Championship. Rangers and Scotland are the only team in, in the Scottish leagues that, that have their own. And the, 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 the rumour was they got it to get Jermaine Defoe to sign for them because he was big into it when he was down here. Um, when I, before I actually bought my first chamber and set up my business, I, I went round three of the England Premier League clubs, so Watford, Arsenal and Bournemouth, and I, I spoke to the medical teams. And at that time, they'd had their chambers for a couple of years. And they say they, 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 don't, they didn't understand the technology. They didn't understand why it worked. But what they said was they had half a dozen years before cryotherapy with very good data on the player's well-being. And they now had very good data for two years using cryotherapy. And they said it was black and white. The, the, the players loved it. The managers loved it because the players weren't picking up the training ground injuries they used to pick up. So they were spending more time together as a squad. Um, and also, if they did pick up an injury, they were recovering a lot faster. And that's continued. That, that's really accepted throughout football and rugby that this, this does help with uh, uh, part of the training regime and part of the recovery regime. And uh, we, we now, as well as the clubs that have their own, there's probably about 20 or 30 football and professional uh, rugby union, rugby league sides that we deal with either through our fixed clinics or more on our mobile side where we take uh, essentially it's a bit like an ambulance, but it has a, 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 a chamber, a twin, twin chamber, chamber inside the, the, the lorry with its own vessel, nitrogen vessel. And we take that round the, round the clubs, do a session with the players, then drive off to the next club that, that we are supporting. And this year, we, we did Scotland uh, rugby during the Six Nations. Uh, we did the British Lions before they went out on the tour to South Africa. Um, we're doing a few of the, the, the rugby league clubs now in the Challenge Cup, so St Helens, uh, Wigan Warriors, uh, Warrington Wolves, these, these sorts of things, as well as in the Premier League, Brentford, West Ham, um, Wolves, Crystal Palace. We, we, we deal with uh, uh, most of the clubs that don't have their own uh, chambers. The, the, um, the reaction that... that we get from uh, people that use use the, uh, the, 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 uh, the the chambers, whether it's our fixed clinics or our mobile uh, operations, is all very positive. And it's not just in football and rugby. We we get um, other types of athletes. In Glasgow, we've had the Stoltman brothers, so Tom uh, Stoltman and uh, his brother, who of course won World's Strongest Man. Um, we've had the equivalent down here in, 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 in England with uh, Shane Flowers. Um, a lot of these guys say they get a, what's equivalent to an anabolic reaction where they, they, they're, they're doing their personal best after they've done cryotherapy. So they're getting almost like an anabolic reaction to the treatment. It really does help with their preparation for events. Or, or, or things like that. So it, we, we see, we're probably quite unique in that we're not just dealing with footballers, we're not just dealing with rugby players. We see a, a whole variety of different types of athletes, all ages, and, and we see a whole variety of people coming in for different medical conditions, again, of all ages, from sort of 10 to the mid 80s we, we've had in. So. It, it's, it's quite a mix. Um, in in the, the, the sports side, a lot of the questions we get asked is whether it's better to use it before training or an event or after an event. And I think the answer that we give to most people is if you can, do both. Um, if you can only do one, then recovery. We, we saw that with a lot of marathon runners that they would come in sort of hobbling, but after the session, they went out ready to go out for another run. So 
it, it, it really does make a difference uh, and, and quite an immediate difference. It's not something that you have to do 10 times or five times to feel different. Most people feel a difference within 30 seconds a minute of coming out of the chamber. And, and, and that's not just in terms of sports people, that's people with arthritis that can't make a fist or can't raise their hands above their, their sort of neckline. And within a minute of coming out of the chamber, they're, they're doing this or they're, they're touching the top of their head. It's, it's, it, it, it is quite amazing in some cases. Uh, so we, we, we see a, a lot of different things. Um, I, I don't know, Jordan, if there's any other particular things that you feel that your clients would, would, would like me to touch on, or if there are any questions that I can maybe do a Q&A uh, to, 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 to help out. I think, sorry, I'll jump in for, for, for one quickly. So I think for, for me, um, I think the, the question would be a lot of people here are um, busy guys and girls. Um, we resistance train. Most of us do train multiple times per week. Everyone here is an athlete in their own right. Um, so, but at the end of the day, obviously, work, life, family, all that stuff going on. In terms of what would you say as as a recommendation? Or I can I know you guys have a place in Glasgow. You know, if 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 these guys and girls were to, to visit somewhere, um, or, or can I you know put a plan in place to to recover to perform at their best with cryotherapy? <laughs> how would you go about recommending? You know, frequency, duration. You know, how often should you they be going? How often should we be looking at? Again, it's something I've personally dabbled with in the past, but never really even what yeah. you said at the start. The, the first thing you said at the start already, I know I didn't do it the right way. <laughs> um, so so if, what would be your recommendations around maybe how someone builds that into a weekly, monthly routine or something along those lines to recover and perform at the best? I mean, all of this comes down as well to, to cost, you know, so and, and affordability. If, if you can afford it, really do it as part of the training regime, both you know, during normal training, up to an event and post an event. So a membership would be the best option where you pay a monthly amount and you come as often as you want. Um, if not, if you've got, if it's just general training, maybe you come once a week. Um, but it, it, it really depends what you're doing. We, we get quite a lot of, of boxers that going up to a fight, they'll, 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 they'll come the last few weeks before the actual fight, they'll come two or three times a week, and then they'll come a couple of times after the fight for the, for the recovery. Um, marathon runners, as I mentioned before, we, we get a lot of them, and we tend to see them immediately after a, an event. So we'll see them on a Monday or a Tuesday after a, a race on the, the Saturday or the Sunday as part of the recovery, and also a couple of times in the week before they, 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 they run the, 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 the event. It, it, it does depend. I mean, it's, to give an idea, with the, with the Premier League clubs, the rugby clubs that have their own chambers, they're using them every day that they're in for training. Yeah. So they'll use it three, four times a week. Some of the clubs and, and some of the, the older players, and when I'm talking about older, I mean the guys that are really old in their 30s, <laughs> <laughs> and, and they'll go in before and after training. Jeremy Vardy, I mean, you couldn't get the guy out of the chamber. He's in all, all the time. But, you know, they're, 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 they're absolutely adamant that it makes a huge difference to them. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, it's down to, you know, how serious you are about you, you know, your sport. Um, and again, everything comes down to affordability and cost at, at the end of the day. You know, if you can do it as often as you can, if you can't do it around the most strenuous uh, times that you're you're training or around yeah. the event. Yeah, hundred percent. But that, that means for everyone then that you know you just need to consider it the last week of the Q two especially. <laughs> <laughs> we do some we do some kind of crazy challenges from time to time um, that require probably quite a decent amount of recoverability. <laughs> um, so certainly around those kind of focus period times would definitely be beneficial for most. 
How how long would you? What's the duration? How long would you go in the chamber? And what's the sort of so, process? Do you do you feel is it absolutely freezing when you're in it? What's the sort of process throughout? Um, the, as I mentioned before, the optimum temperature is the minus 130 degrees, and three and a half minutes is mm -hmm. the optimum time. You don't need any longer, um, but that's that's the optimum time. How cold does it feel? Surprisingly, not anywhere near as cold as you would think. The pre-chamber is set at minus 65. And sometimes when you go in there, you think, is, is it on? You know, it's, and when the main door opens, you do get a bit of a, oh, that's a bit chilly. But by the time you've walked in, it's fine because it's a dry cold. Yeah. If there was moisture, then, you know, you wouldn't last 10 seconds. Um, but I don't know if people have seen people on the television, they, th they throw a hot cup of coffee up into the air in the Arctic when it's minus 30 and it comes down as powder. If you did that in our chambers, we wouldn't be very happy because you just get a coffee stain on the wall because it's such a dry cold. Um, and and that's, that's the difference. It's the moisture, it's the wetness that makes it painful and unpleasant to the human body. You take that away, it's actually, it's not, it's not unpleasant. It's, it's quite an enjoyable experience. We do get quite a lot of people that come in quite nervous the first time because of the temperatures. When they come out, they say, oh, that wasn't as bad as I was expecting it to be. Um, yeah. So the temperatures are ridiculously low, but they don't feel that way. And it's the legs and the, funny enough, the elbows that feel the cold the most. Your trunk and your head actually don't feel that bad. And the, the reason is, the brain thinks, oh my God, I'm being attacked. So it sucks as much blood away from the arms and legs as it can. And then the blood vessels at the tops of the extremities tighten and close. It's called vasoconstriction. So all the blood is washing around the vital organs in the brain to keep them warm. Hence why, you know, your main part of your body and your head don't feel that cold, but the legs and, and the elbows do. And, and when you come out, and this is, this is the main bit that why athletes use it, why it's so good for recovery, is the blood vessels, not just at the tops of the arms and legs, but all over the body, dilate wider than normal. So you get really good blood circulation and it's actually better blood because it spent this time washing around the vital organs where it's picking up nutrients and oxygen. And so, you know, you, you, you get, and it's that circulation that speeds up the recovery process. So from a footballer's point of view, if they get an impact injury in the leg, you get the bruising, the, the blood vessels squeeze, so you don't get good circulation around the affected area. You come into the chamber, when you come out, the blood vessels around that affected area dilate, so you, the bruising disappears really quickly. And, and that's what he helps and speeds up uh, the recovery process. Yeah, no, that makes sense. No, good. Yeah, that, that, that was my next question, the actual mechanism behind it, but that's that's quite clear. So is it then just the oxygenation of all everything going around the body that really speeds up that recovery process? Yeah, that, that's it. That's the main yeah. two principal benefits of, of cryotherapy. The circulation is one of them, and that's the main reason that athletes are using it. The yeah. other principal benefit is its anti-inflammatory benefit. So the extreme cold is really good at taking away inflammation in the body and that's why it's so good for a whole range of inflammatory based medical conditions you know anyone with chronic back pain or neck pain or anything like that that's inflammation based uh, so it, 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 it's very good and from a suppleness point of view and, and this is completely counterintuitive but you're when, when when you're always told to warm up properly before you do anything Otherwise, you're in danger of pulling a muscle or a tendon or, 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 or stretching too far. When you go into the chamber and when you come out, you're much more supple than you are before you go in. And, and, and you'd think, well, it can't be. I come out like a block of ice, but how can I bend over, put my hands flat on the floor? How can I do this when I'm so cold? And, and, and this is one of the crazy things about it. And it's one of the reasons why the medical teams at the football club say that the players just aren't picking up the training ground injuries. 
from hamstring pulls and this sort of thing through not being warmed up properly. So not quite sure how that works, but it, it, it is, I, I see it day in, day out where people say, well, I'm, I've got a sore back and I'm really stiff. And I'll say, well, how, don't, don't overdo it, but how far can you bend over? And they, they go down and say, okay. And when they come out and say, try that again, and they gingerly, and then they just keep going and they say, oh my God. And it, it, it is, uh, it's bizarre, but it is immediate. It's not, again, it's something that happens within seconds of uh, coming out of the chamber. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Perfect. Perfect. Does anyone have any questions for Ian around cryotherapy, anything specifically they, yeah, they I, want? Yeah, I, I got, I got. I got one. Uh, is there any conditions or something that you do not recommend this cryotherapy? Yeah, so the, there's, there's, there's a bunch of contra conditions, as, as, as we call it. So, um, if you, for example, we, we had a, a really good one recently. We rent a chamber to Brentford Football Club and they signed Christian Eriksen. <laughs> and I, phoned, I, I emailed the, 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 the medical doctor there as soon as I saw that and said, Oh, congratulations, fantastic signing, but please do not let him into the chamber until you've checked with his heart specialist because he has a pacemaker. And you can't go into the chamber with a pacemaker. It's one of the contra conditions. And, and the joke was they came straight back and said, oh my God, thanks very much. He was in his speedos ready to go in. <laughs> but but they, they, they were only joking. But So there are certain conditions. There's also certain conditions where we need to ask extra questions. So if you've got uh, an underactive thyroid, or so hypothyroidism, if you're claustrophobic, if you've got Raynaud's disease, which is the what you get white fingers or white toes if you go into the cold, if you've got cold urethia, we, that, that, that one, where people get these things, if they go into the cold, they expose the skin to this cold. It doesn't happen in cryotherapy. It's the moisture that, that causes that condition. So it's a wet cold, but they are, they are able to go in to the dry cold with the cryotherapy. If you're a diabetic, we need to know because you couldn't go in twice uh, in the chamber. You could only go in once. Because diabetics, if you cool their blood, then it takes them longer to warm their blood up again. So if they went in again, they would be starting with a, a low blood temperature and it might go to a really dangerous level. So there are, and there's a medical questionnaire on our website that you can download and it lists all the contraconditions. Probably half of them aren't complete bars like having a pacemaker, but we have to ask additional questions such as is it under control with medication or or diet that's that sort of thing yeah. there was a couple of questions come through mark so one from peter um can you isolate certain areas muscles or body parts i think based off what you said at the start then you wouldn't get the benefit if you were trying to do that there's obviously you have to take into account the brain so control. There, there's actually there, there, there is a way to do that um it's called local cryotherapy so yeah. Most of the football clubs have these devices and you might see them running onto the pitch with it. And rather than the wet sponge, the, the, it's battery operated and there's a, a little nitrogen canister and they can do a sort of two minute blast over the ankle or the knee. I have these localized machines where we have a, it's a 50 liter canister of nitrogen. Um, and if you just wanted to isolate the knee, you would push this around the knee for two to three minutes. Um, and you can just, and it's just called local cryotherapy. So it's a standalone machine. Um, so there are devices that do that, um, but the chambers, no, you, 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 you treat the whole body. But you can also, if you've got a, a, a sore ankle, you don't expose the ankle in the chamber you'd have that covered by a sock. You'd never have your socks below the ankle. Otherwise, you're in danger of getting frostbite. But you still get the benefit. Your foot and ankle still gets the 
anti-inflammatory and circulatory benefits. You don't have to remove, you know, if you've got a broken hand, again, we get this with boxers, you don't have to take the glove off to get the benefit. So when you, you generally cover all the extremities, so the ears, the nose, the mouth, the hands, the feet and ankles. Everything else is for modesty. So guys who just wear their boxers or a pair of shorts, they say the more skin showing, the better. So you, girls will wear a bikini or a swimsuit, shorts and a sports bra top. But, but we get ladies wearing cotton leggings and they never say, well, I no longer feel the benefits. So, you know, people can wear what they like. They, they don't have to expose, you know, it, it, all parts of skin except, you know, for modesty. Uh, but they, they do say the more skin showing, the better. But I haven't personally experienced from, you know, nearly 7,000 people. We've diff different people that we've had through our chambers in Glasgow and Poole that people, ladies especially, who have worn a T-shirt or a, a pair of leggings have said they don't, they don't get the benefit. Yeah, cool. Sounds good. Um, question two, more questions come in. So with one from David, how much does one of the chambers cost? Um, <laughs> and then with the increased flexibility when people come out, how long does that typically last for? <clears throat> um, I'll answer the second one first. <laughs> <laughs> When you come out the chamber, it's a bit like, my God, thank goodness I'm alive. And it releases what's called a beta endorphin. It's almost like the body's natural morphine. So you feel really good. You feel euphoric in a way. People go in a group, they come out and they, they, they talk really quickly. Uh, it's almost as if, you know, because they're, they've got this like happy thing happening. It's also instantaneous, almost pain relief. Now that initial reaction, depending on the individual, can last 30 minutes, it can last several hours. So you get people say with the, the back pain, they come out and they say, oh my God, that's amazing, it's gone. Then they go home and say, oh, that's, oh, it's not, that, that's rubbish, it's come back. And then a few hours later, they realize, oh, it's gone again. And it, it's the, the time it takes for the cold to do the anti-inflammatory bit takes longer. But that endorphin, that release of that natural morphine is an instantaneous reaction. The, so, so the suppleness is part of that. You get the initial uh, suppleness and then it might, you know, if you were using it as part of a training regime, you would, you would have that initial suppleness, you'd be warming up, so you'd be fine afterwards anyway. But if you didn't do anything, if you just came out of cryotherapy, you would initially be, or oh, feel supple. If you walked off and didn't do anything else, then tightening up's not the right thing, but you wouldn't maybe be as supple. But then because of the anti-inflammatory thing and the increased circulation, you'd find that over time, that yes, you are more supple. Um, in terms of the cost, uh, the professional machines, some of the football clubs are paid upwards of £150,000 for their chambers. But I think that's more the manufacturers taking advantage of the money they think, they think is in Premier League football. Um, but over £100,000. Uh, and then you've got your vessel, your nitrogen vessel on top of that. Um, the smaller chambers, the electric chambers, the single person ones, the good ones are probably 60 to, yeah, 60, 70,000 pounds. The, the cheaper ones are anything from 20 to 40,000 pounds. Better saving up to do then, Dave, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Any, anyone get any other questions for, for Ian? All good. Um, perfect. So, Ian, there is a, a branch in Glasgow, is that correct? So, most of the guys and, and girls here are based in the UK. Where are your in house clinics um, specifically, if you don't mind? So, the, 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 the fixed clinics at the moment are in Annie's Land in Glasgow, just along the road from the big David Lloyd Club there. Okay. Um, and the other one is in Poole in Dorset, where I'm based. We're hoping to open one in Edinburgh very, very soon. 
Um, and then the idea, the next one's actually going to be in southwest London. And then we'll hopefully fill the gap in between. Our mobile operations are, the, are, are, are from, um, we, we have come up to do Celtic uh, uh, and, and the Scotland team, but most of our mobile activity is from Manchester to London, yeah. uh, where most of the, it, it, uh, it's mainly the, the top rugby union, rugby league clubs, which are mainly Midland based. And then it's Premier League Championship first and a couple of second division sides that we deal with, but they tend to be from London to, to Manchester based. Yep, cool. Sounds good. Perfect. Um, anything else you want to, to add on, Ian, before we, we wrap things up? No, if, uh, you know, if anyone has any questions, my email details are on the, the website. Happy to answer, you know, take any phone calls or answer any emails anyone wants to, to send to me. Happy also to do, you know, for, for, for your guys to do discounted rates for them at Glasgow if they want to go along. So we can have a chat about that and I'm, I'm happy to offer offer that to your, uh, your, your, your guys and girls. Perfect. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Thanks, yeah, something, yeah. I'm sure. I have a quick one, mm -hmm. lads. Um, Ian. Maybe next boot camp we could try it on. <laughs> so, sorry, I missed that. Shop. On you go, David. David, yeah. take the question. Yeah. Ian, um, how long do you have to like stay in one of the chambers for? Three and a half minutes, he said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool. And what did you say? Did you have to go from like cold ones to like really cold or do you, it is just there are two two chambers the pre-chamber is is set at minus 65 it's its main purpose all professional chambers have two chambers and the main purpose of the pre-chamber is to act as a cold barrier between the room temperature and the main treatment chamber so that when you open the door of the main treatment chamber you're not losing cold. So the main purpose of the pre-chamber is to prevent cold loss. Um, so you're only in you're only in the pre-chamber for as long as it takes for everyone to, to walk in and the outside door to close. And then one person would open the internal adjoining door into the main treatment chamber at minus 130, minus 135. Right, right. Cool, thanks. Perfect, good stuff. Well, Ian, thank you very much for your time tonight, Ian. Um, that was oh. really insightful. Um, and yeah, definitely learned, learned a few things tonight. Yeah, thanks a lot, Ian. That was excellent. Thanks very much, Ian. Thank you, appreciate it. No problem. See you later, Ian. See you soon, thanks for that. Cheers. See you later on. Bye-bye. Thank you for your time. Um, we will dive into a couple of quick Q&As just before we finish up, but we'll let Ian kind of drop off and, and do his own thing. Um, Q&As wise, do we have anything from anyone? I think we had not, nothing coming from check-in this week, to be fair. Oh, no, no problem. No, no question there. No, no problem at all. Um, any other questions that we can answer for anyone while we're here? Yeah, I was just going to say, who's trying cryolabs? <laughs> I'll give it a bash. I, I must admit, I've never tried it. Yeah, I'm quite keen giving that a go. I've just messaged my mum to tell her I've, I've got to take out a glass, we'll get her frozen down to minus 175. <laughs> <laughs> so mum, mum's got arthritis, so she's got bad knees and all that. So, um, oh, really? I think if I'm going to come down, then I'm going to drag her with me. Yeah, so, fine. Uh, quite right. Quite right. Let's, let us know how it goes, Mark. Get some feedback. <laughs> We'll get you a code for from Ian as well, um, or something along those lines for the for the discount. If anybody in the Glasgow area or even down south where it was Pool and Doss or something like that, yeah. Um, if it works for anyone, let us know and we'll get that sorted. Cool, cool. Anything else we know with tonight, team? All good, all happy. Good, good stuff. Well, of course, first week of the Q2 summer sprint is on. Um, so it's game on for points and the league table is, is up and running. So um, get your meal preps in, check-ins ready to go. Um, and it's, it's time to accelerate into the summer. But thank you very much for your attendance tonight. Really does mean the world when you just come on when we have guests. Obviously, we, we want these guys to, to bring more guys like that on and, and add value. Um, so really appreciate you taking time to, to show up tonight as well. It really makes 
a, a big difference for us. And yeah, outside of that, enjoy the rest of your weeks, folks. If there's anything I can personally do for anyone or we can do for you over and above what we're doing, please reach out, let us know. Um, and enjoy the rest of your evenings and your days, folks. See you later on. Thanks, guys. Bye. Cheers.